the older athlete chapter 14 page 265 we'll start with that anybody who is joining late with uh, help them out with the page numbers or topic name so aging athletes or older athletes are typically men or women who are 40 years or older okay but also uh, depends on what kind of sports they have been performing in okay for every every kind of sports they have an age limit post which you have to retire okay so all the retired athletes could also come under the older athletes category okay and because of their advancing age they still continue to pursue their athletic activities and sporting achievement okay and along with this pursuit uh, persuasion of them uh, they may also have certain conditions or limitations that could affect their mobility or movement it could be some injury that they have uh, retained throughout their sporting career okay any any physical or uh, fitness activity related injuries or any chronic uh, health conditions that have caught up with with age okay so they have to keep these things in mind as well because as we age the the ability to heal quicker uh, as compared to how we were long, young and all it reduces okay so aging effects on uh, uh, athletes so the peak performance in all the athletes it will drop in late 20s and early 30s okay that's a time when the when your performance peak drops down uh, then the, there is a rapid decline gradually and it increases with age there is a percentage given there is 0 0.7 percentage of decrease in your performance when you reach 40s 50s 60s with every decade of your life okay this uh, 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.7 percent decrease in your um, performance is seen okay and along with that aerobic capacity of your muscles okay aerobic capacity or your, your muscles producing energy okay to function in presence of oxygen that is a big capacity of your muscles that also decreases with age okay flexibility decreases because of certain injuries that you have uh, retained from the past that could aggravate okay recovery and healing takes time even when you are into an endurance kind of activity in your old age when you are an older athlete you are still retaining those endurance activities and restraining exercises etc whatever wear and tear your muscles will have at that point of time okay it will take a whole lot longer for you to recover to heal from that as compared to when you used to train when you used to do high intensity training when you were younger and when you are doing high intensity training when you are older okay the amount of time that it may take to heal and uh, recover back into your normal self will be much more okay so these are the most common effects of aging on a physical uh, an athlete's physical fitness coming to energy requirement as we age our energy requirement decreases okay we do not require the amount of food that we used to have as an adolescent or young adult when we when we go into mid 30s and mid 40s and so on okay as we progress with our age our requirement of energy reduces so along with that the food consumption the quantity of the food that we consume that also reduces okay so mifflin and saint john equation i guess most of you are already aware of even in nutrition science uh, uh, chapter we will take it in detail okay so most of the contents of the bmr basal metabolic rate calculation okay uh, that is same in men and women except in men we will add number five okay and from women's formula we will subtract 161 okay this gives you the amount of calories you should have on a daily basis okay and it's a very generalized category there is one drawback of using the mifflin and saint George equation when it comes to athletes for regular general public you can use it okay but when you when it comes to athletes it's different because uh it gives again it gives you an insight about an averageness okay a average old age person an average uh, man or woman who is above 50 or 60 okay there is a concept of averageness when it comes to bmr okay so if the person is performing any physical activity okay the, the person is athletic okay even in old age this person is burning this amount of calorie whatever amount of calorie this person is burning you have to add it into this formula okay that will be their calorie intake for example in the textbook they have given uh, a 60 year old male okay who has 
13 height and weight okay 1.7 178 um, centimeter and 70 kilogram is the weight okay so according to the uh, the dimensions given here the this person's calorie requirement will be 1518 kilocalories okay and also a 30 year old man okay this is this person is half the age of the 60 year old man okay 30 year old man with the same height and weight their calorie requ requirement is just 160 1668 okay so hardly there is a difference of 150 calories okay and in practicality we can't say that okay just imagine um you, uh, anyone uh, like just imagine you are a 30 year old person okay and your calorie requirement is 1600 1650 something like that and somebody someone else okay who is double your age who is 60 and their calorie intake is 1500 something that's just a difference of 150 calories is it feasible is it is it a feasible guidance can you ask a person who is double your age okay, in numbers just to have 150 calories lesser than what you have that is that is the ideal conditions can you say that can you make such a generalized statement No, it cannot be, okay? The calorie difference between a 30-year-old man and a 60-year-old man should be much more than 150 kilocalories, okay? So how will we come to this conclusion, okay? How will we come to this conclusion that exactly how much calories they require? It depends on the physical activity level calculation, okay? So whatever answer you get in this Mifl Mifflin saying your equation, keep that answer, don't discard it, keep that answer. But to that answer, you have to add the, the PAL level, okay, the physical activity level, okay, this is the reason why we follow the physical activity level. So, whatever is their energy expenditure, whatever calories they require, multiply it by the physical activity level, okay, and add the number of calories what they are, uh, what, the, add the entire number of calories what they are burning because since you are giving this advice to an older athlete, okay. You're not giving to a person who's a senior citizen. You're giving this advice to a person who is an older athlete. Okay, when we call somebody an older athlete, he or she is still performing certain endurance activities, certain high intensity or moderate to high intensity activities is being performed by this particular person on a daily basis. So that's the reason why we call them older athlete because they are burning a whole lot of calories. So the amount of calories which they are burning, you have to add that also. So whatever answer you get using Mifflin and Sainger formula, multiply it with the physical activity level, whatever they have, and add the amount of calories which they are burning and average amount of calories which they are burning on a daily basis. That's how you calculate the proper calorie requirement what this person requires. Okay. So is it clear? Is the concept clear? How or what is the drawback, drawback of Mifflin and St. Jor and how we can correct this drawback using physical activity calculation? Is it clear to all? Okay, so multiply whatever you get from Mifflin and St. George uh, your equation, multiply that answer with the physical activity level of your client and add the amount of calories they're burning on a daily basis, average amount of calories they're burning on the daily, daily basis. Whatever answer you get, that should be the calorie intake on a daily basis, not exactly what Mifflin and St. George equation gives you, okay? Next, coming to protein. With age, your muscles respond less to anabolic effects of dietary protein what we what we mean by anabolic effects is that when you have dietary protein when you have your protein rich food okay it breaks down it undergoes catabolism in your intestine but when these amino acids catabolized amino acids reach different parts of your organs they anabolize they, they come together and form new protein channels okay so the way how the muscle is going to re respond to the making of protein uh, channels within your body that comes down with age okay main reason being even if you're having a diet, diet that is rich in protein okay with respect to age with respect to advancing age 
your gut, your intestine is not absorbing enough amount of amino acids as it used to earlier. Okay, and when enough amount of amino acids are not being absorbed, it will not lead to an adequate amount of anabolism. Okay, so that could be one reason. Second, the effects of muscle uh, exercise on muscle protein synthesis. When you exercise a lot, okay, your muscle will try to make protein for itself. Okay, and as you grow old, how much ever you exercise, your muscle is not going to make as much of protein as how it is it was doing so when you were young. Okay, so the the uh, the way how your muscle also synthesizes protein that comes down if you exercise or you do not exercise. Exercise will lose its efficacy as you grow old. Okay, so uh, sacropenia you can see here what is sacropenia. Uh, uh, just see the uh, a sectional di diagram of how a normal person's a healthy adult's per, uh, body looks like okay bone you can see the amount of muscle mass which they have the muscle mass and then a thin layer of fat when sacropenia seeps in as, as we old all grow old okay we all undergo sacropenia okay different levels of sacropenia depends on our lifestyle etc so as we grow old when sacro sacropenia seeps in the bone relatively remains less or more depends upon your calcium and vitamin d intake but you can see there's a significant reduction in the muscle mass okay lean muscle mass is significantly reduced and the fat is much uh, is much more more than double okay the the surface area that the fat has to cover is more than double so this is what we call as sacropenia okay gradual loss of muscle mass and strength that muscle mass gives okay by the by the time you cross your 30s and by 60s it is accelerated okay so if you want to prevent okay if you want to you, uh, like you can't completely prevent sacropenia as it is at one point of the time everyone has to undergo this particular situation but how can you delay the early onset of sacropenia how can you delay okay on a daily basis a person who is older athlete on a daily basis they should have at least 1 to 1.2 gram per kg body weight of protein okay it can prevent sacropenia consume protein during uh, during and immediately after the exercise because it will help in correcting the wear and tear which you have undergone during your exercise regime okay leucine which is usually found the type of protein which is usually found in milk and dairy products is very good for older athletes okay because leucine has almost all the essential acids which one requires Eight, eight or more essential acids, which one requires. So is it clear about protein, how to uh, tackle this situation? What is sacropenia? How much protein one has to consume? Older athlete, one, what, has to, what they have to consume? Okay. Next, coming to carbohydrate. Carbohydrate requirements for athletes, okay? For athletes, there is no change carbohydrates what a young athlete may require older athlete may pretty much require the same amount okay because the amount of energy which they are burning okay to compensate that the carbohydrates what an older older athlete requires it's pretty much same to what a younger athlete would be taking okay but can we say this treatment is true for all can we say that the carbohydrate requirement will have no difference in all senior citizens when we compare it to young citizens. Can we make that statement? No, because we, we have already seen the first slide in, uh, itself. Okay, as we grow old, okay, the quality of food which we eat reduces. The amount of ex energy expenditure what, what we face reduces. So do we require this amount of carbohydrates what we used to have as a young person? No, we do not. Okay. But for athletes, but for athletes, this is where the athletes differ from an average healthy human being. Okay. Athletes, there would be no difference in carbohydrate requirement. Okay. And furthermore, classification of what kind of uh, carbohydrates or how much carbohydrate they require based on their activity level. If they are having a moderate intensity exercise, okay, five to seven gram of carbohydrates per kg body weight is adequate. Low intensity exercise, 3.5 gram of carbohydrates per kg body weight. 
higher the intensity of exercise, six to ten, or sometimes more than ten gram of car um, carbohydrates per kg body weight. Okay, and um, for other athletes, we will not use this uh, ratio. But when it comes to older athletes, it's seen that if they are having a low carb diet, it helps to burn more fat because in sarcopenia you have seen how the fat layer of our body doubles. Okay, the lean muscle mass gradually declines, but the fat layer doubles. Okay, so you have to focus on burning the fat as well. So low carb diet, okay, it, it will usually help the even if the older, older athlete is not doing an intensive workout as how they used to do when they were quite young. Okay, so it allows them to have a low carb diet. So low carb diet will ensure that they are burning that excessive fat also. Okay. So is that clear about carbohydrate? What things you have to keep in mind? All these studies and everything which have proven these statements are mentioned in the textbook. Just go through it whenever you're free. Next, coming to fat. Fat is quite similar, okay, for adults as well. For, especially for females, females and women, women and older athletes, uh, we have the same kind of fat requirement, 20 to 35% of your total energy requirement throughout the day, whatever you are having, okay, whatever can, amount of calories you are having, 20 to 35% of those amount of calories should come from fat, okay, and in that you have to completely avoid trans fatty acids, because as you get old, your risk of cardiovascular diseases increases. Okay, so it's better to stay away from trans fatty acids. Athlete or no athlete, okay, doesn't matter. Stay away from trans fatty acid as you close your 30 years of age. Okay, and 450 to 900 mg of omega 3 fatty acids is adequate. And for older, older athletes, we would suggest to have more fish, okay, if they're non vegetarian. Do not have, uh, do not lean into poultry or red meat. Okay, try to have more fish in, in terms of protein requirement as well as omega-3 fatty acid requirement. If you are a vegetarian, you can go for flax seeds, chia seeds. Okay, supplements are really great. Uh, this omega-3 uh, supplements are really great for uh, older athletes because it makes sure that uh, if from diet, we can't give the entire nutrition, from supplements will ensure that you get entire nutrition met okay so omega-3 fatty acid the first option is diet but also keep supplements handy okay because with age the absorption level of your gut reduces okay your intestine is able to get nutrients faster from supplements as compared to food okay next coming to fluid as we get older okay our perception of thirst decreases Sweating also decreases with, with age. You do not sweat more as you age, okay? As compared to younger athletes, older athletes don't sweat as much, okay? And with age, we all know, we always know that our kidneys are all the essential organs. They also, or their functions is also reduces, okay? So the, uh, the ability of your kidneys to make a concentrated urine, okay? It is not possible, okay? The, the urine which will flow out of a older athlete's body is much more diluted because they are not sweating. If they're not sweating, the excess amount of water will always go through urination. Okay. They may have to frequently go for washrooms or loo breaks. Okay. So that, that the reason being they are not sweating much. Okay. And uh, when their thirst perception also decreases, so it puts them susceptible to dehydration challenges. Okay. So five to 10 ml of uh, water, at least, um, before uh, you hit your training or before your, your training or exercise regimen starts, 5 to 10, uh, 10 ml of water per kg body weight is ideal. Okay, at least two to four hours before exercise, make sure you have this amount of water. And as a rule of thumb, you can just make sure that um, 400 to 800 ml of water per hour you are taking so that you can prevent dehydration, especially when you are working out using high intensity workouts, sessions, etc.
So uh, vitamin D levels in your blood also drops after certain age and the skin's capacity to produce, to synthesize vitamin D on its own when exposed to sunlight, that also declines, okay? Because uh, the, the skin is not as functional as how it was supposed to be, okay, be due to various physiological changes of aging, okay? So vitamin D, you have to... Uh, include vitamin D rich diet, okay? If you are a vegetarian, you have to compulsorily include vitamin D supplements, okay? Vegetarian or vegan. Usually when you age, um, you are not able to tolerate milk products more, okay? Uh, your milk to tolerate, uh, lactose intolerance chances are higher when you get older, okay? So it's better to uh, have a supply or backup supply of vitamin D supplements as well and get the vitamin D serum analysis checked to find out if you're deficient or not. Any doubt, please mention the chat box. It's a very small chapter, simple chapter.